Hey everybody, final thoughts time for Concordia, which I believe, I, I looked it up, I'm pretty sure Concordia is Latin for harmony, which is entirely appropriate because this game is all about this, all about this harmonious balance and intermixing of all these different mechanisms, you know, the area control, the deck building, the, you know, and not, not just between the mechanisms in the game, but also between the players themselves. I mean, obviously you've got the area control wanting to get to set and pl getting, we're getting there before somebody else, the uh, deck building wanting to buy that card before somebody else, but you know, that brilliant, brilliant card, the diplomat card, where, I mean, you might be holding this in your hand for quite a while, come on, play your colonist, play your colonist, play your colonist, and they just never do, and you're like, Okay, I guess I'll copy that merchant, and then boom, they play their colonists, right? You know, I mean, that's, it's a very subtle interplay, but it's really, really sharp. There's so much to think about. And this game is the epitome of elegance. All you do every turn is just play one card. That's it. But it's such a rich wealth of strategic and tactical possibilities that come out of that. It's, I'm just absolutely, I am floored. I am gobsmacked. I mean, Matt Gertz, um, you know, uh, you know, we played Navigador, we played um, Hamburgum, but this, as far as I'm concerned, blows those out of the water. And I think it's part because it, he has abandoned the Rondell, which I, I gotta say, good on you, Mac. Um, I mean, although the Rondell's great, you know, we absolutely enjoy those games. We're working with that very, very tight constraint, trying to bend it to our will. But in this game, I mean, you're building your fate, you're building your engine in your hands. And, you know, there's a level of personalization that comes from you actually deciding what order am I going to play these cards in? How soon am I going to bow out and reset my deck? How much am I going to rely on the fact that, you know, if, if I just wait a couple more turns and a couple more of these are flipped, I can make a huge amount of money off a of prefect. Or should I do the merchant right now? I mean, you know, there's just so much going on. I, I, I think it's brilliant. I, I definitely think it's one of the top games of the year. I mean, I, I love it that much. But now it's interesting. Um, I've played it three times now, and every time I've played it, from about the two-thirds of the way, 66% mark right to the end, I am literally jittering, jittering with excitement. I can't wait to see how the game is going to turn out. Because I, I love the, you know, the hidden scoring, you, I mean, and, you know, and the scoring itself at the end is so satisfying and so exciting with all those multipliers. And you know, I mean, knowing that those multipliers are so important, the competition for getting these, the right cards at the right time, just brilliant. So, I mean, I, I love it, and um, I just played my first game with Jen, and her response was, eh, nice, yeah, I'll, I'll play it again. I mean, and she, I was floored that she was not as blown away by it as me, and so we actually spent quite a bit of time talking about it, more so this game than most, because again, I think it's amazing, and she's like, eh, it's nice. And, you know, so I'm trying to compare with, like, lots of games we played recently, uh, Florenza the Card Game, um, you know, Amerigo, uh, you know, and, and you, know, get, you know, like, real, like, some of our favorites like London or hell even Navigador and um, you know I'm trying to extract from her because you know Jen you know, she's a glass artist she's a professional artist she doesn't really have a great lexicon of you know game design terms she doesn't think uh, in game analysis terms it's, it's just really kind of foreign to her so it's very hard for her to articulate even though she's a very smart woman you know why she likes one game and doesn't another. And I think what it came down to, and so this is basically kind of getting Jen's perspective, which I normally don't do, because normally we're pretty much in lockstep, but we were really off on this one. And so I think it's good to mention her opinion. And the best I could figure is that while she appreciates it, and you know, everything I said about it, she agrees. Yes, that's great. Oh, I love that. That was really nice. That was a lot of fun. This game is very dry. Um, you know, very, very dry, very straightforward, um, you know, really kind of nondescript. And, you know, because like, I, I was, it was interesting to talk about this versus Florenza the card game, which is also a very, very simple, straightforward, convert goods into other goods to convert to points kind of game. And I think this one definitely has a lot more. No, no, no offense to Florenza the card game. I think that's a neat little game. But, you know, Jen liked that one a lot more. And so we talked about why, you know, what was it about this? I mean, you know, what does that one have that this one doesn't? And I think what it, you know, at one point she just, you know, she just mentioned, oh, I really like hiring the artists. Like, of course you do. 
because it's a very, that game has a stronger sense, a stronger connection of theme. You know, the, a lot of these Euro games really are, you are really just some kind of rich noble who, um, you know, is not really present in the scene. It's just your job to pull strings and manipulate agents to, you know, achieve a higher goal that's really just kind of abstracted as points, you know, prestige or honor or whatever. They're all the same thing. And, you know, we, we love those kinds of games. But this one for Jen just didn't strike a strong accord, and I think it's maybe because for her, you're a little bit too removed. I mean, you're really kind of up at this godly level, um, you know, this kind of abstract character just kind of manipulating these little houses on the board. These houses don't even have names. It's, it is weird. There's kind of this strange theme disconnect in Concordia compared to its contemporaries. Um, you know, because these don't really feel like, actually, the game doesn't refer to these, these houses as colonies. It, it calls them literally houses. And, you know, when you're playing in the two or three player game, well, actually, it's interesting. This is the side, actually, I meant to show this. Oops, ah, there we go. This is the three or, four, or four, three to five player side, which shows all of Europe and some of Africa. And you literally are setting up colonies and, and time. But when you play on the two player side, and well, you just saw this for a while, I don't need to show it to you again, but I'm gonna do it anyway. You are playing basically just up and down the length of Italy. And it's kind of weird to think of, well, yeah, Rome is sending out colonies to Sicily or colonies to Florence or, or Venice. And you know, it's like, that's really too close. That doesn't really feel like colonies. And, and I think maybe for Jen, the game kind of, it, it's, it's a, maybe a little bit too abstract. It's a bit too much about the purity and the harmony of these intermixed gameplay mechanics. And so, you know, it left her a little bit cold. I mean, she would definitely play it again. She would definitely enjoy it. And me, I loved it. I, mean, I would play this anytime, anywhere. I just think it's so smart and so clever. But I just thought still that that was kind of interesting. You know, hopefully that kind of gives you an idea for how you would respond to this game based on the type of player you are. Again, really sharp. I think it might be Matt Gert's best, but it is nowhere near as thematic as, say, um, Navigador or Hamburgum or, I mean, actually I haven't played NTK or any of the other ones, so I don't really know about them. But Maybe that's something that you should bear in mind. But in terms of gameplay mechanisms, um, in terms of elegance and beauty of play, in terms of replayability, oh, because I didn't mention, uh, the game comes with an official variant, which is very, very cool. Instead of starting with a preset amount of goods and everybody having the same ones, you instead start with 25 bucks, Sisteri, whatever they are, and you actually you look at the, the random setup of the board and you decide what starting goods you want to buy out of that money. I think that's brilliant because that adds an even greater level of tactical and strategic thinking right there at the get-go, seeing what the other people are buying, seeing what you're buying, and um, you know, customizing your starting goods based on the state of the board. Another very, very cool element, but Concordia is full of very, very cool elements. Like I said, so the only somewhat minor niggle that I could throw at it and really this is on my wife's behalf, is maybe a little bit on the dry side in terms of theme. Maybe not quite so, um, doesn't quite fire the imagination. You don't really quite feel that sense of exploration or discovery or and all that because you're spending a bit more time just thinking about the raw um, mechanisms, the, the raw input, output, and the, the brinksmanship that goes on between players. So if you're looking for that, I think you'll love Concordia. But there, there, you know, there's a couple of opinions. I haven't really done that before. Maybe I'll try and, you know, um, drill down on Jen's feelings in the future. Because that is really interesting. It's good that she, I think, Again, me, 20 years experience as a game designer gives me a, a very, maybe a different outlook on games where she's more of like a normal person. But anyway, that's it. I'm going to stop talking. I just thought it was kind of interesting. Um, and so I decided to share with you. I don't know if it's interesting to you guys or not. You guys let me know. Also, please let me know if I made any mistakes. I don't even want to think about how many math mistakes I made in that in-game video. I, I'm sure it's very, very embarrassing. I'm sure I goofed up here and there. But as always, hopefully you have an idea of what this game feels like, how it is to play, and whether it would be a game for you. So thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good day. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.